The portrait of Carlo holds a strange secret. The more lies that Geppetto's puppet tells, the longer Carlo's nose will grow right out of the portrait. And this, of course, is a reference to the original novel. Geppetto commissioned this portrait of his son from the artist D. Gray, and this is a reference to the 1890 short story, The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde, in which the vain aristocrat Dorian Gray hides away a mysterious painting that is enchanted to keep his appearance young and beautiful forever, while his appearance in the portrait continues to grow old and more hideous with each of his terrible deeds. In the Lies of P universe, Dorian was a genius painter that created vivid portraits infused with different magical qualities, and some of these portraits even held the souls of their subject, which might mean that a part of Carlo might very well be hidden in this painting. Although Dorian died under mysterious circumstances, more of these enchanted paintings might be floating around, so this might not be the last time we get to see one of D. Gray's famous magical portraits. The black cat carries the city long spear, and upon closer examination, it turns out that this spear is actually part of a signpost from Toyland, which is a reference to the land of toys from the original novel. The land of toys is described as a perfect place with no schools, no teachers, no books, a place where you get to play and eat candy all day. But it's also here in the land of toys that lazy children get transformed into donkeys that meet horrible fates. So it's possible that the black cat escaped a similar gruesome end from Toyland, and by the looks of the signpost, he didn't leave without putting up a fight. So Toyland might just be a place that we get to visit for ourselves in upcoming content. There's a statue of a woman at the Estella Opera House with a dedication from someone named Gigi, and it reads, In honor of the happiest days of our family because of her presence, I still miss you, Camille. We know that Gigi stands for Giuseppe Geppetto, but who is Camille? We learned from a records book that Camille was the first puppet discovered to have an ego, a sense of self. She was a maid puppet that caught and saved a falling baby from its crib. Despite this function not being found anywhere in her design, something deep inside her had compelled her to save the baby, and when the alchemists took her way to be studied, she exhibited the first instance of a puppet speaking and said, send me back to my child. But instead of returning her to her household, she was interrogated and taken apart in the name of Ergo Research to try and understand how it was possible for her to have developed a personality. Geppetto's tribute to her is a little too personal for her to have just been a random puppet. We later learn that Camille was the name of the genius engineer that was commissioned by the alchemists to create the Saintess of Mercy statue, and this statue had the ability to bring puppets back to life. The female figure is holding a pea organ, ready to place it into the chest of the puppet lying in her arms. And on the base of the statue is the same workshop crest that Geppetto wears, meaning that Camille was a part of the workshop union herself, and possibly even had a more intimate connection to Geppetto. The touching dedication may suggest that she was Geppetto's wife, which would make her Carlo's mother. And when she died after Carlo's birth from the petrification disease, a heartbroken Geppetto named his maid puppet after her. Because Ergo was infused with human essence, Camille's Ergo may have been used to power the puppet, and thus her personality had started to manifest. It was her strong bond to Carlo that awakened her ego. But when the alchemists took her away and dismembered her, it was only after their research that Geppetto realized that Ergo contained a part of a person's soul. And this is why he later creates his plan to revive Carlo the same way Camille had been revived all those years ago, by powering the puppet's heart with Carlo's Ergo. And the cruel treatment of Camille was probably another motivation behind Geppetto's master plan to ultimately defeat the alchemists. The gold coin tree is another reference to the original novel. In the story, the fox and the cat trick Pinocchio into bearing a bag of gold coins, promising him that it would sprout into a tree bearing branches full of gold coins. But in Lies of P, the gold coin trees are something much more sinister. They are former listeners, people like Sophia that have the gift to communicate with Ergo, and they have been turned into trees by terrible experiments, and their tears take the form of gold coin fruit, meaning that the gold coin tree in the Hotel Enclave used to be a listener. And from a certain angle, it very much looks like a kneeling woman with cascading hair looking down to the ground, crying. But the mystery of just who this listener once was remains unsolved, at least for now. Hotel Krat used to be an insane asylum, and before that, it was a castle. But who first built it and why? 
Guillaume's ballad tells the tale of a king's knight who found a shining tree on a rocky mountain, a tree with fruit that resembled gold coins that could cure diseases and cure the plague. It was right next to this golden tree that Guillaume built a castle and called himself the Holy Knight, believing the tree to be a sign that he should worship it. But due to his growing obsession with the occult that began from finding the golden tree, Guillaume eventually went mad and the castle became a prison for him and others when it was turned into a mental asylum. It was here that the alchemists most likely began experimenting on people with ergo, and they created an underground tunnel leading from their base of operations to the castle. Although patients of the asylum claimed to see hallucinations, a large fire engulfed the castle, and all the records were conveniently destroyed. When Antonia eventually purchased the castle and renovated it into a hotel, it developed a reputation as being haunted, and people were eager to visit just to catch a glimpse of the apparitions, not knowing that the ghosts were actually just alchemists using it as a passage to their island. But after the puppet frenzy and the conflict that arose between the alchemists and the old families of Krat, Antonia decided to seal away the gold coin tree to prevent the alchemists from ever accessing it again. But Guillaume's ballad reveals that the gold coin tree existed here before the original castle was even constructed, which means that the alchemists, or their predecessors, might have been conducting their dark experiments far longer than originally thought. There's a little detail that you may have missed during the scrapped Watchmen fight, as you were probably too busy trying to stay alive, but the police puppet's arms are covered in little doodles. The gigantic mascot puppet was nicknamed Murphy by the slum children of Krat, and although he was abandoned behind City Hall after being deemed a mechanical failure, he came to be loved and cherished by the children who continued to visit him. In this official image of Murphy, as he appeared before the puppet frenzy, you can see the children etching these fairy doodles onto his arms. And although Murphy ends up losing his mind in the frenzy, it's clear that a part of him still remained, as you can find the word friends carved into the ground near a bench covered in gifts given to him by the children. Murphy's nickname might also be a reference to Alex Murphy from Robocop, who is also a beloved police robot, just a far less scary one. You may have noticed that there are a lot of fish emblems all over Krat. But Kra is known for its puppets, so what's up with the fish? Well, not too long ago, Kra used to be a fishing town, and the herring emblem is Krat's original insignia. This also explains why the city is directly on the waterfront. In the mere span of 30 years, Kra was transformed from a commercial fishing village into a wealthy technological metropolis, all thanks to the establishment of Vanini Works and the workshop's wildly successful puppet industry. The herring is simply a reminder of Krat's origins, and a reference to the man-eating dogfish that swallowed Pinocchio and Geppetto whole. Champion Victor was once a great circus performer called the Hercules of Krat. He was one of the first victims of the petrification disease, before details about the plague were publicly known. His wrestling career was brought to a premature end with his death, but Simon Manus saw this as an opportunity to experiment. Victor was submerged in an elixir, a chemical solution created by the alchemists who had been working on a formula to create the perfect human. This bluish chemical was refined from ergo, and while extremely dangerous to those who were exposed to it, the elixir granted inhuman strength at the expense of physical deformity. Victor was among the first experiments to receive the elixir, and after some slight modifications made to his body, he was resurrected from the dead and even scheduled to make a big comeback appearance fighting an automated puppet. In return for granting him his life again, Victor swore his loyalty to the alchemists, even if he was nothing more than a puppet himself for Simon to use. Victor might be a very clever reference to Mary Shelley's novel Frankenstein, in which the alchemist Victor Frankenstein creates a monstrous man of unparalleled strength and size. And if you look closely on Victor's back, you'll see a faint trail outlining where a surgical procedure may have taken place post-mortem. The red actress Adelina Corday was the most beloved prima donna in all of Krat. That is until her little sister Patricia was discovered to have a beautiful voice all of her own, even believed by some to be more beautiful than her sisters. Although Patricia admired Adelina and looked up to her, hoping that one day they would share the stage together, Adelina was jealous of her sister's talent and despised her, repeatedly stabbing Patricia's portrait inside her locket. We learn later on that Adelina poisoned Patricia, 
ruining her voice and ending her career forever. A heartbroken Patricia gave up her dreams of ever becoming a beloved singer and instead became a stalker, skilled guards belonging to the upper class of Krat society. But Patricia never suspected her sister's betrayal, and even until her death, she defended her, vowing to hunt down the puppets that she falsely believed had killed Adelina after the puppet frenzy. In a karmic twist, the petrification disease eventually takes Adelina's voice and ultimately her life, reuniting the two sisters on the final stage in death. The Golden Lie is a powerful staff that you can obtain from Carlo's portrait once you have gained enough humanity. And it has a funny little detail that you probably haven't noticed. The Golden Lie has nostrils. Yes, you're fighting with an actual nose. And at the root of this nose is a collection of gold coin fruit, which we now know are tears from listeners, which might mean that in this universe, Dorian Gray might have been a listener. And this might be another clue about his mysterious death or his disappearance. Because as Sophia tells us, the alchemists turn listeners into gold coin trees. So we may be coming across Dorian Gray in the future just with a very changed appearance. I hope you enjoyed this look into some of the lore in Lies of P, and please make sure to give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to my channel for more upcoming content. And let me know if there are any other questions about the game that you want to see answered. A big thank you to my channel members Doomsday Zen, James Flack, Twisted Bishop, Joey, Alexandra Jojo, Don Tecoy, Francisco Mena, Crod, Solomon, and Squally. Thank you all again for your continued support and if you would like to join my channel membership, you can follow the sign up link right here. <laughs> Until next time, everyone. Bye.